as you know, we work hard on raising awareness of women's mental health here on the House of Wellness. It's so important. We're women. We want to be mentally well. But recently, a story that I did on the issue really hit home for me because I'm also a mother of a little girl. Yes. So the subject sits really heavy in my heart. And studies suggest more than half of Australian women suffer from anxiety and depression, with many not feeling comfortable discussing their issues, not even with their doctors. Yeah, this is, this is sad. So to find out what can be done if you or someone you know is suffering from mental health issues, listen up because we are joined today by Dr Fiona Martin. Hello. Hi. Hi. So this is astounding. It is Australian astounding. Australian women don't even feel comfortable talking to their GP, their doctor, family and friends. Yeah, it's very concerning that the statistics are that half of Australian women suffer from anxiety and depression and that 67% reported mm. that they feel on edge and, and you know, uncomfortable every single day or most days of the month. And it's really concerning because they are the caregivers, mm. in, generally speaking, That's in their right. households. So there's a whole community of people that are affected by that. Mm. Why are they not feeling like they can go and speak to someone? Well, we know that a lot of women are engaged in, you know, paid work, but the bulk of the domestic chores at home and the caregiving are also done by women. And I guess that they're overwhelmed by what's in front of them, what they have to get through. And so they're putting other people family mm. members before themselves mm. um, and also just finding it difficult the stigma of mental health talking about your issues and talking about you know the difficulties that you have in your relationships or yeah, absolutely. you know yeah it, it's hard to recognize this isn't it in ourselves sometimes and also the ones that we love what should we be looking for in ourselves or family and friends that are suffering? Yeah, well, I'll say this, that um, all women across the lifespan are vulnerable to um, stress, anxiety and depression and no one is immune. Okay. Um, not one of us. And, you know, there are lots of different causes, of course. You know, there's psychological, social and, and you know, um, biological causes yeah, as well for, for stress, anxiety and depression. But there are certain groups, I think, that are very vulnerable and those groups include young people that inst you know young women that Instagram generation yes that mm. vulnerability to um, hair yeah that's mm. right you know that idealistic you know body image that they're looking at these images and and they're not at all um, achievable they're false. They're false. Yeah. Yes. yeah but they're exactly. apt and they're distorted and yeah yeah yeah, mm. yeah very much so um, young mothers that transition f into parenthood and that adjustment period it's very difficult to adjust to and we know that one in five women suffer from perinatal anxiety anxiety and mm -hmm. depression mm. Um, and also what we call sandwich um, mums, the sandwich generation <laughs> of mothers who are, they're the mums that are working, they're looking after their teenage children but they're also looking after their parents as well. Oh, so they're sandwiched. I've not even heard oh, of that. Yes. That makes so much sense. Mm. There's so much pressure mm. on that generation mm. of women. Yeah. And have you found too that I think women are just more prone to feel like they need to be perfect all the time. Absolutely. And, you know, that, that sense of, you know, I'm not good enough, mm. I'm, not, I'm not a good enough parent, I'm not doing, you know, I'm not earning enough, not doing enough. And, yeah, definitely that feeling of perfection is definitely problematic and feeds anxiety. Yeah. yeah. So, so what can we do yeah. to yeah. assist ourselves when we're stressed and mm. then when it shifts into perhaps more serious issues. Yeah, so understanding the differences between stress, anxiety and depression is really important. Okay. That's what we call psychoeducation, so understanding how it all works. Stress is short term, it's not long term, and it's our body's response to a trigger or a threat. Okay. It can be positive and it can be negative. So the positive um, stress is obviously, you know, helps you meet a deadline at work um, or, you know, win, win a race. Negative stress is, interferes with sleep, for example, mm. and that's not helpful. And you know, stress can cause havoc on our on our mind and body if we don't get get it reduced. Um, you know, before it can turn into something more serious like anxiety mm. or depression. Um, ang anxiety is more, you know, um, longer term, and it is characterised by excessive worrying. So yes. it's that constant, intense worry that you know. Um, and it you kind experience. of becomes debilitating. So it when can it gets be. to that point, yes, see your doctor, absolutely, get some information, absolutely. make a call. Mm. That's right. We are so lucky that we have resources in our country mm. um, 
and free ones as well. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much, Dr. Fiona. There is so much to cover. See your doctor. You can get help. We have free resources in this country as well. We are so lucky. Yes. So if you feel like any of that rang true to you, make a call. I absolutely seek help, but also go to our website. There's some really helpful pieces of information there, including a stress reduction toolkit, Very which cool. includes things like meditation, how to sleep yes. well, eating well, exercise, all those things that reduces your stress. Oh,